Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today for part number three of our teaching devotion series called It's More Than a Door. We've been talking about the symbolism and the typology of different doors in the Bible. Today we're going to talk about the inner temple doors. Your scripture verse for this week is 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, which says, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let's talk about the inner temple doors. I have five points for you. Here's number one, the dilemma. Thousands of years ago, Adam and Eve's sin brought separation from God for all people. Because of their sin, we became separated from God. God is holy. He cannot tolerate sin. Sin must be paid for, and sinful people can't do it. Only someone perfect can. So that's the dilemma. God loves us, but because of sin, disobeying God's laws and commands, we have become separated from Him. Well, number two, the day. God loves his created people, even in spite of this sin and this disobedience that all of us have within us. He loves us anyway. So God made a two-part plan to provide forgiveness. One was a temporary plan, but one would eventually be permanent. As part of the temporary plan, Solomon built a temple, a building, according to God's instructions. It would be a place where people would worship and offer sacrifices to God. Number three, the doors. The temple had doors in it, and we're going to talk about two of the doors that were part of the temple. The doors to the holy place in the temple separated the regular areas of a temple from the very deepest parts of the temple. And that first area was called the holy place. And those doors were there to prevent anyone who did not have the right authority or offering from going through those doors. The next door was called the door to the holy of holies. The holy of holies was the very deepest part and the most holy part of God's temple, a place of worship. The holy place represented God's presence on earth and the holy of holies represented perfection and forgiveness of sin. Now, the door to the holy of holies was different because it wasn't a wooden door with a hinge like that. It was actually a veil or a curtain. It was that kind of door and that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. Number four, the daily deeds. At the temple, in the holy place, there were things that had to be accomplished every day in order to correctly follow God's instructions for worship and sacrifice. And only if you were a priest, you could enter the holy place as a representative of the people before God and to perform those duties, like looking after the 12 loaves of unleavened bread, tending the lampstand, and burning incense, and other things like that. Those were the daily deeds at the holy place. Then number five, the Day of Atonement. Once a year, the one and only high priest, there was only one high priest, would enter through that door to the Holy of Holies, through that veil, and he would have incense, the blood of a bull for the sacrifice of his sins, and two goats. And the high priest would wave around the incense so it clouded up the room with a perfumey smell. And then he would sacrifice the blood of the bull on the mercy seat on top of the Ark of the Covenant for his sin. Then the blood of one goat was put on the mercy seat for the forgiveness of sins of the people. And then the other goat was sent away after the priest laid his hands on the head of the goat to impart the sins of the people. And that scapegoat was sent away forever. There's so much rich, amazing stuff to the Day of Atonement. Don't have a whole lot of time to cover it here but I just want to help you understand about the door of the veil through the Holy of Holies. If the incense or the offering of the high priest were not correct, the high priest would die right there in the Holy of Holies. And so this is what they did one time a year, every year on the Day of Atonement. That was part of the temporary plan that God had to deal with sin. But now let's look at the second part of God's plan, the permanent part of God's plan to deal with sin once and for all permanently. Remember, we're talking about the symbolism or typology of doors in the Bible. So what is the symbolism of the inner temple doors? Well, the holy place door represents a divider between God and man. Only the approved were allowed to enter. That was the priests back then. But the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, that because of Jesus, all believers are now priests through Jesus and his sacrifice. We are a royal priesthood, and so we can enter into the presence of God. We can go into the holy place, which is the awesome, comforting, amazing presence of God. And then the Holy of Holies door represents the barrier only passable by a perfect blood sacrifice. The blood that was sacrificed on the altar back then wasn't perfect because it was just from an animal. But now Jesus is our perfect high priest who shed his blood before the mercy of the Father and because of that our sins can be forgiven when we put our faith and trust in him. And then the Bible says that God ripped the veil after Jesus breathed his last and shed his blood. God ripped that veil, that door of the Holy of Holies 
stories from top to bottom. And so now anyone who fully trusts Jesus by faith can enter into the presence of God forever and have his sins forgiven. And there comes our scripture verse. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So that'll do it for this week, the inner temple doors, and we'll get on to some more doors next week. In the meantime, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the beautiful imagery and symbolism that the Old Testament gives us to help us understand what Jesus has done for us by shedding his precious blood on the cross and then rising again so our sins can be forgiven and we can have new life in your presence forevermore. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said...